Namaste and a very, very good morning to all of you. I welcome you to my channel, The Outlier. My name is Mithun. In today's video, I'll be talking about what are Z-scores and how do we generate the Z-scores easily using SPSS. Even before I proceed to demonstrate what do we mean by Z-scores and how we can obtain the Z-scores using SPSS, may I request you to subscribe to my channel, also like and share my videos. Let me begin by giving you a simple analogy. Imagine you are at a concert and your height is 5 feet 9 inches. That is, you are 5 feet 9 inches tall. You want to know how do you compare to the average height of the crowd. Let us suppose that the average height of the crowd is 5 feet 7 inches with a standard deviation of 2 inches. Your Z score is like a special number that shows how many steps away from the average height you are. There are three scenarios here. The first is if you are exactly 5 feet 7 inches, your Z score is 0. On the other hand, if you are taller than average, your Z score is positive. Example, plus 1. If you are shorter than average, your Z score is negative, example, minus one. In your case, with a height of five feet, nine inches, your Z score would be around plus 0 0.5. This means you are half a step taller than the average height. Let's now proceed to look at what all of this means in the context of statistics. A high Z score, example plus two, means you are significantly taller than average. A low Z score, example minus two, means you are significantly shorter than average. A Z score close to zero means you are around average height. Z scores help us understand how individual data points like your height or weight, length, distance, so on and so forth, compared to the average value in a data set. It's a simple way to see how normal or abnormal something is. Let's now look at some of the technical details about Z-scores. What exactly are Z-scores from a technical standpoint? A Z-score is also known as a standard score. It is a measure of how many standard deviation an element or data point is from the mean of a data set. It is a way to compare individual data points to the average value of the data set. You may ask me a simple question, why do we need Z-scores? Z-scores are mainly used for standardization, that is, comparing data from different datasets or distributions. Second, Z-scores are also useful for outlier detection. If you want to identify data points that are significantly different from the mean, you can use Z-scores. Thirdly, Z-scores are used for normalization because it transforms the data to have a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. Let's now ask a simple question. Where do we use the Z-scores? Z-scores are extensively used in the field of statistics for hypothesis testing, confidence intervals, and regression analysis. Z-scores are also used for data analysis. Typically, it is used in data mining, data visualization, and machine learning. If you are in the field of finance, you would use Z-scores for risk management, portfolio optimization, and credit scoring. If you are a social scientist, you would use Z-scores for psychology, sociology, and education research. Last but not the least, 
it is extensively used in the field of quality control particularly for process control and monitoring in the field of manufacturing let's now look at some of the applications of z scores there are a lot of applications of z scores particularly in the field of credit risk assessment you can use z scores for medical diagnosis quality control predictive modeling research finance and education in summary z scores are a very powerful tool for data analysis allowing us to compare standardize and identify patterns in the data their applications are diverse and widespread making them an essential concept in many fields with this background about z score let's now look at the data set that i will be using in today's demonstration this data set is called as the car sales data set i have picked up this data set from the samples folder of spss as you can see this data set comprises of the vehicle characteristics of different models of vehicle i've got variables like sales resale value price engine size horsepower wheelbase further i've got good variables like width length curb weight fuel capacity mileage per gallon you can use any of these variables to obtain the z scores what is the sample size in this data set you can see here i have got a sample of 157 records in this data set in the first instance i will be generating the z scores for only sales let's now let's later proceed to look at how we can obtain the z scores for all the variables to obtain the z scores for the variable sales what we can do is we can go to the analyze menu bar the second option from the top is descriptive statistics within the descriptive statistics you can choose the option descriptives which is second from the list let me go ahead and select the descriptives option this will open up a dialog box which is called as the descriptives dialog box as you can see in the canvas to the left hand side i've got the variable sales which i'm going to move to the canvas on the right hand side now you have an option which is called as the options tab let me go ahead and select this the default options that spss will generate would be mean standard deviation minimum and maximum let me hit the continue button now to obtain the z scores for the variable sales you have to select the option save standardized values as variable let me go ahead and check this particular option and hit the okay button this will take me to the output window and it will generate the descriptive statistics for the variable sales this will show you the sample size minimum maximum mean and standard deviation but hang on this is not what i'm interested in i am interested in producing a new column called as the z score for sales so let me go back to the data set scroll to the extreme right side and you can see here z sales you can see here spss has created a new column called as z sales which will give you the z score for each and every observation now what is so interesting about this data to know what is interesting about this data let me go ahead and select the analyze menu bar descriptive statistics and then select descriptives i've already selected sales now let me scroll down and select the variable z scores and move it into the canvas on the right hand side 
Let's now go ahead and click on OK. Now you can see the descriptive statistics for the variable sales, which is the original variable. And below this, you can see the Z scores. The sample size will remain the same. You can have a look at the minimum value, the maximum value for the new variable. But what is really interesting is the mean and standard deviation. When you look at the original variable sales, it had a mean of 52 and a standard deviation of 68. The new column, that is a Z score of sales, has a mean value of zero and a standard deviation of one. You may ask me, where can we use Z score? One popular example as to where we can use Z score is in regression. Many times when you take the original variables as independent variables, they suffer from a problem called as multicollinearity, which means there is a lot of correlation in the independent variables among the independent variables that you have taken. On the other hand, if you were to take the transformed variable after Z transformation, you should be able to get new variables which are relatively uncorrelated. So it is a very, very useful technique to solve the problem of multicollinearity. And you can see here, just by picking one particular option, you can easily generate the Z scores. Now, what if you want to generate the Z scores for all the variables? You can go back to the analyze menu bar. The second option from the top is descriptive statistics. I'm going to follow the same navigation path, descriptives. Let me remove the variable Z score. I'm going to choose the rest of the variable like resale, price, engine size, horsepower, wheelbase, width, length, curb weight, fuel capacity, fuel efficiency. All of these variables will be moved into the variables list. Let me now hit the OK button. You can see here, this will give you the descriptive statistics for the old variables. Let me go back to the data set. This is the new data set, which will have the Z transformation for each and every variable that I have taken. You can see here, this is the Z transformation for the variable resale. Then I've got the Z transformation for price, engine size, horsepower, so on and so forth. You can use the transformed variables for any of the advanced analysis rather than the original variables. With this, I have come to the end of today's video. In today's video, we've seen what are Z scores and how we can use Z scores in SPSS. Thank you very much for watching this particular video. Have a great day ahead.